today we're going to talk about something really cool, I think, is and interesting. And I, I heard about this, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago for the first time, which is where there's a procedure. If you have problems with your gums and the receding, there's a procedure that can restore basically the, the, the gum to where it should be. Is that, is, am I accurate on that? You are, absolutely. This is uh, one of the uh, alternative procedures that we have in dentistry, which brings us closer to the laparoscopic surgery. Very minimally invasive. Um, but I, I would like to, you know, talk a little bit about the causes of recession. One, Please, please do. because People have receded gums. It's not only due to the gum disease. Sometimes people use um, excessive brushing techniques. They use the hard brushes and the hard bristles that can, uh, or they position the brushes, um, un unfortunately, not in the proper way to cover the whole tooth uh, and the gums recede, meaning that they're exposing a little bit of the root surface and the teeth become sensitive. Another reason is bruxing, meaning um, that you, you know, move your teeth around at night or clench your teeth due to the stress. And we are living a dream right now. So that happens a lot nowadays more than any other times. Um, yeah. It is a dream. Um, so tobacco, a tobacco use as well, you know, chewing tobacco, putting it right next to the tooth can cause the gum recession as well. Now, now what have you, what have you found um, are electric? Well, there's so many different types of electric toothbrushes out there. Do you find those are more beneficial or do they cause more problems? I think that um, I, I do like the electric toothbrushes. I, I, I personally use Sonicare and I use Oral-B IQ toothbrush. Now a lot of the toothbrushes are smart toothbrushes, meaning that they come with an app on your phone and you can attach it to your mirror and a brush application can monitor the way you brush your teeth and tell you whether you're missing some spots or you're applying. I've not heard you know, of this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's a, it's a different technology. Wow, mm -hmm. so it can tell me if I'm doing this right or not. Yes, it, it, can, can, it can actually correct your brushing technique. Uh, and, and what I like about now about some of them that if you brush too hard with an electric toothbrush, it will stop. Like for instance, Sonicare will stop vibrating if you're pressing too hard on it. So, and you can get Sonic. You can get these toothbrushes at like a normal store, like Target, yeah. Dwayne Reed, Costco. You can order them online. Absolutely, those are great. So that so so and those also and also one of the benefits is that most of the electric toothbrushes have a built-in timer, and we do recommend to brush the teeth for at least two minutes, which is a very very long time. So. If you time yourself, you would find out that the two minutes is not what you thought that the two minutes are. Right. Normal person, our study show, usually spends no more than 30 seconds, 30 to 45 seconds brushing their entire mouth, which is not adequate enough. Wow. I usually do the two minutes, but I do it on one, one the bottom and then two minutes on the top. Is that much? Yeah. too much? That's great. Okay. I, mean, I, do my, I do my routine in the shower, so it gives me some time to wake up. <laughs> and I don't live schmutz around the mirror, so I don't get in trouble with my wife. So, but everybody has their own secrets. All right, perfect. So now, and so, so, so some of these things can cause gum, uh, recession of the gums, right? Absolutely. Now, now, and that can happen. You can have recession as a child or when you're younger. It's not just something that happens as you get older, right? Yep. Also, you know, if your teeth are not aligned the proper way, and if you're putting extra forces while you're biting on certain things, that can cause recession. If your teeth are not clean the right way, and if you have a lot of deposits sitting and pressing on the gums, that will cause recession on the gums as well. So a lot of, a lot of causes, gum disease is one of them, but besides that, a lot of the techniques that you use or your daily activities, even if you don't have gum disease, may cause some recession. And, and braces. Roots. Braces can do that too, yeah. That's actually how I think I got recession for mine was from braces. That could be. I like to blame it on that instead of anything else that I did wrong. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's always good to find an escape goat. Dentist <laughs> usually is a good one. <laughs> yeah, my dentist. It was my dentist. It was his problem. Yeah, of course. That yeah, was him. <laughs> so, so tell us more about. All right. So, what happens when you have a gum recession? What what actually is going to ha what happens? Um, well, your roots getting exposed. And there are different levels of how your gums can recede. So we have gum tissue that's covering the root. And then if you go 
beyond the point where there is a, 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 an attached, as we call it, an attached gingival tissue or an attached gum to the tooth. Yeah. There is a mo mobile uh, oral mucosa that every time you talk, every time you chew, it's like your cheek is inside and the bottom of your um, and the bottom of your tissues down there that moves with you all the time you are talking, you're eating and everything else. And if it gets beyond the point where you don't have the tissue that is attached to the root and all you have is that mobile tissue that every time you do any type of a daily activity, it actually exposes more and more. So it all depends on the level of recession, the level of sensitivity. And how, how can you find, is there a way besides going to just a dentist, is there a way for you to figure it out for yourself? Kind of how, how, how much recession you have? Yeah, you can just pull your lip down or up if it's your upper mouth and, and, and look and see. And it can, you can know, actually, you can try to move it like this and see if anything that you move, moves the tissue that covers your, your teeth and see if, if you are in that point of no return where you don't have the tissues that are actually supporting your tooth. And now every time you eat or move, they kind of expose and pulling the tissues down even more. Hey, this is Dr. Ross Carter again. Listen, um, if you're a doctor or a medical professional or interested in adding exosomes to your practice, or if you're actually a potential patient who's interested in exosomes, I want you to listen. Now, the company that we're recommending, I have a, an agreement with. Basically, I refer them business. Now, I would rather, if you're getting exosomes, make sure to get it from an actual company and not a distributor. So I'm not you know, doing it that way. Basically, I'm just referring you to them. If, but if I do refer them to you or you to them, basically what you'll get is not only will you get product from them uh, at the best price you can get, but you'll also get an additional bonus of free uh, amniotic exosome products as well. So, so what that means is if you order uh, the, uh, the placental exosomes, the MSC exosomes, you'll get in addition for free amniotic ex uh, exosomes, absolutely free. So if you're using amniotic exosomes, you're already paying for those. And so you get a, you get a vial of those for free with, with purchase of the MSC exosomes. And hopefully you see the, the, the difference in the value by now. If you're a patient, and considering this and you think, hey, I'd like to do this procedure, um, all you gotta do is you can contact me and I'll, I'll send you places that could be close to you. So here's how to contact me. Just go to my, just send me an email at drrosscarter at gmail.com. That's D-R-R-O-S-S-C-A-R-T-E-R -S -S -E at gmail.com. Or you can call or text me at 561-962-1231. That's 561-962-1231. Nine six two one two three one. So either email me or text me or call me. It's just best to email or text me, and I can get back with you with that information. So if you're considering this, uh, let me uh, you know be the reference point, and it, it helps to support the show. Obviously, uh, I get a little uh, a benefit if I refer you. So um, I want to be transparent about that. So please support the show and email or text me and I can get you connected and give you the best prices. Plus, a special is you're gonna get additional amniotic fluid exosomes for free. Can't beat that. So uh, I hope you uh, continue to enjoy the show. Uh, I'll let it continue. Here you go. So, so when you have gum recession, uh, are there things that can help to reverse it before it gets to a, to a really critical point? Well, one of, you know, once again, depending on the reasons of the recession, as you mentioned, braces before or improper oral hygiene, sometimes if you have a lot of deposits on your teeth and they, they cause the gums to recede, sometimes after cleaning it up, it, it might bring it back a little bit. There are also little muscles that we call frenuli that are, you know, holding your lips on the top and on the bottom. Sometimes if they're positioned very high at the gum tissue, they might cause the pooling of the gum tissue as well. And, and, and cutting these little attachments will bring the tissues back to somewhat normal level where they used to be. But, you know, unfortunately it, it would not uh, grow back to where it used to be automatically. So there are different, different type of procedures that we can do to bring it back. And before that pinhole 
gum rejuvenation technique, the only alternative used to be a gum graft, which involves, um, you know, releasing your gum tissue and taking a donor site and bringing the graft material, whether it's gonna be your own skin or artificial skin and suturing it back up to cover that area and, uh, and make it heal. So with this unique approach of the procedure that we're using now with a pinhole, it does not require any sutures. It does not require any um, donor sites, which are usually a painful site to, to, to harvest the tissue from. Yes. So all, it's, uh, all, all that is involved that we make a small pinhole with a little needle and we have specially designed instruments that are introduced into your gums uh, through that hole. And then we kind of release the gums from where they're attached to the bone and we lift it up with, mm -hmm. with just a little bit of pressure. And then we put the collagen membrane and the membranes are staying in there, supporting the new position of the gums. And in that new repositioning of the gums, the gums are covering the roots of the teeth already. So, and then your body does all the healing. And the advantage of that is that it's normally doesn't take more than um, an hour. You can do multiple teeth versus doing just single teeth because you need a lot of donor sites to harvest the tissue to do the conventional grafts versus lifting up your own tissues and, and making your body heal. No sutures. Normally sutures dissolve within 10 days. Wait, so there's, there's, how does it stay where it's supposed to stay? The, coll the collagen brings it up. So you kind of introduce through this whole, through this whole little hole, you introduce little collagen membranes and you put them where you release the gums. So you're kind of making little cushions Okay. In the areas that were in between the teeth where they were released and it actually holds them up. And then the collagen slowly dissolves and your body regrows the tissues after it's dissolved. So and how, how, long it, how long does it take for, for you to really have it, I mean, somewhat normal, I guess? I would say about, um, you know, somewhat normal, you would see it in about a week or two. Mm -hmm. But the healing process takes up to three months. To completely heal. Yes. And during that period while it's healing, how do you eat, I guess? You eat normally. You, you know, the food does not really has any, you know, you, you, we recommend, of course, you know, softer diets. You know, not, 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 no sticky, chewy foods that you don't disturb the graft position. The most problem with the procedure is that people always want to know what it looks like. And okay. They start going in front of the mirror and pulling their lip, uh -huh. and trying to play with it, and then that can dislodge the graft because there's, once again there is no. But it, it can even do it when things are stitched up, and we recommend avoid brushing for 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 the first week or two, and just using the antibacterial mouthwash to clean up the areas and, and rinse the mouth with that. But you know it, it's a it's a very conservative procedure, and if people. Um, don't play with their with their new with their new acquired gum <laughs> gum graft. Right. It it usually stays in place and it does it does great. That's awesome. And and it's using your own skin or your own gum and you're just you're you're just moving it up. Yeah. I, I think so I saw that. a video where they just showed it and they just just pulled it right up and it was like just moved. It yeah, was so, we call it a gum lift. So. Yeah, it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's... and the results are are mostly permanent for that kind of problem yeah, per yeah absolutely it's very you know numerous studies show it's very compatible with the gum, gum grafts is it 100 percent? i wouldn't say so i mean once again if you continue brushing on with a hard brush or clenching you your teeth and, and you don't take don't take away the source of why you initially acquired that problem then then it usually goes back to where your own tissues, you know, gone back, but with, it takes quite a time. Yeah. And so is this, uh, is this type of procedure something that's covered by an insurance plan or not typically? Um, some of them are covered by insurance plans. Uh, once again, dental insurance is one of the biggest scams that we have. You know, the dental insurance premiums for the most part are capped at about 1500 to 3000 dollars 
that's what in 1970 when the Dell Insurance came into the market could buy you a new car. Now we're no even close to buying you a rental car for a month. Right. Uh, so it, it, it is covered exactly at the same rate. Uh, well, it, it is nothing but a, an alternative technique of putting a gum graft. So if your insurance plan covers the gum grafts, it's no matter what technique the doctor decides to use, you will be covered at the rates where the gum grafts are covered. Normally, it's 80%. So assuming that, they, that someone is interested in this and it doesn't have insurance that may or may, uh, may cover this kind of procedure, what kind of price range does it uh, typically run in the you know, average? We're talking about $1,600 to $3,000 per site. How many sites are there in the, uh, in the mouth, really? Once again, it, it depends on how many teeth have to be covered. If you have one tooth on each side, that you have to take care of, it's one fee because you will still have to do numerous introductions and numerous gum releases. If, if, if it's two or three teeth on one side that you're doing that release technique, you know, it, it has a, a, a significantly smaller price amount that you would charge because you're already doing the surgery in that area. Gotcha, gotcha. Excellent, all right, that sounded awesome. I mean, it, I mean that's, it's, that's, this is what I'm gonna look into doing myself when I, uh, Decide to finally get my uh, gums moved. <laughs> yeah, that's, and, and it's, 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 it's once again, you know, I'm fortunately I did not have it done on myself, but I had members of my family that I performed the procedure on, and you know, they still live with me, so it's a good. It's that's a good, a good thing. They still talk to you. That's they good. still talk to me. Yes, and and they are the ones that I see on an everyday basis, so I could really have a clear follow up of, right. of, of what the procedure feels like on a daily basis. <laughs> They'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's usually, it's usually the loved ones that let you know all the time. <laughs> That's true. All right. And uh, so if someone's interested in finding out more about this procedure, how, how do they get in touch with you? Um, they can always call my office at um, the phone number 212-371-1414. They can look us up online um, at www.nylaserdentist.com. Um, they can do the Google searches on the internet and see if they're not in my area or live in a different state. They can search if there are any doctors that are doing this procedure. Uh, once again, it, it, it's really it's it's really unique in the sense that it's um, been approved. It's it, it it is a course where you are taught the technique, and you can only claim that you are doing the pinhole gum rejuvenation procedure if you attended the course and you got your license. So in a sense, the person who developed the technique, he sells you the license of the procedure to be performed, which is right. genius. So, so it, it actually is a copyrighted name. It's a copyrighted thing, yes. You cannot, you cannot go into the details and teach other doctors that have not attended the course. You cannot get the instruments if you're not properly trained on that, which I think it's very good for yeah. the patients in the sense that you don't, you don't get anybody who just buys the things online and watches a YouTube video and says, okay, now I'm going to be, I can fix your gums. Yeah, I can fix your gums. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Great. Um, that, that was really, really, really helpful. And, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, is there any information that, um, I missed or we didn't talk about? I think we're all good. I think we're good too. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, doc. It was a pleasure speaking with you today. And, uh, Anybody who's having some gum recession, there are alternatives for the traditional, you know, grafting that that uh, they would usually have to face. Absolutely. So, and it's just a matter of your lunch break. You know, you just can come in and we'll, we can fix you in an hour. And that's awesome. Hey, you didn't mention that yeah. part, but that's good, too. Yeah. And uh, so you can get it done in an hour. That's one. Well, that's a nice that's a nice lunch break. You're in New York City, right? I am in New York City in the middle of Manhattan right next to Carnegie Hall. Hopefully the things will reopen one day or another, you know, and you can enjoy all, all the beauties that this wonderful city had to offer before the pandemic. Yep, that is true. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.